After a very long reading, you're supposed to give a very long homily. <laughs> two women are accused and two women are about to die. And both are saved. And yet there's a tremendous difference because Susanna is innocent. She did not do it. But the woman in the gospel actually committed adultery. And in her case, she's actually standing before her Lord and God. And Susanna is freed by the wisdom of Daniel and the holiness of Daniel. And this woman is also freed. But there is a tremendous difference. Because our Lord allows those there to recognize that they themselves need as much redemption as this woman. And this woman is freed, but she knows she sinned. And she has a perception that she knows that Jesus knows she sinned, especially his last phrase. And can you imagine her walking home? And for me, this is extremely important for each of us. Can you imagine being that close to death? There was a, a movie years ago called The Stoning of Sariah that is, it's got some very striking images in it about a woman who was stoned to death. She was falsely accused and stoned to death. And it's a Jim Caviezel movie as well. And the images of her being stoned are quite graphic and quite powerful. And so seeing somebody that is put to death in that way and the woman knowing that she's about to be stoned when she is walking home do you think she could ever forget that moment? She had a deep experience, a personal experience of what it meant to be saved. Of what it meant that her sins were about to lead to death. And Jesus stepped in and he himself said, no, I don't condenare. Which is a strong word. We actually don't, I mean, if you actually look at the etymology, it's condamnare with damnation or wishing affliction upon. And our Lord says, I do not condemn you, but don't do it again. Don't go down that path. And the thing that helps her is knowing that Jesus himself saved her and she will never forget this. And you and I must be the same. We must not line up in that confession line because I know if I, can, if I do something, I know I can always go. There's that freedom. But there's also that invitation that says, he loves me and calls me higher. He calls me to my potential. And that's the great gift that our Lord puts in front of us today. Always. It's that invitation to know that he loves her and he loves you and he loves me personally. And I'll leave you with this. In just a few days... We're going to see that our Lord takes this woman's sin and says, stone me, but put it in the form of a cross. Whatever she deserved, give it to me. But not just that woman, the two men in Susanna's case that falsely accused her. And our Lord says, I'll take their sin too. And those are wretched men, but I will take it. It's that love, brothers, that we want to profoundly contemplate a love that loves me deeply steps in and says hey I will take your sin I will take the punishment but you've got to let my love penetrate knowing that I pursue you I seek you I love you personally and I save you and once you understand that then the capacity to, to start avoiding sin grows and the deeper capacity to communicate that love to the people you're going to meet, not only next week, but for the rest of your lives. Amen.